All right, traders. This is this is a recording. This is this is May thirtieth, twenty twenty three. This is the afternoon webinar on Tuesday. My name is John Kerrigan, and I will be conducting the webinar this afternoon. It's about forty five minutes to an hour long. So I'm here to. Hey, CP. Hey, May. And everybody else that's here today. Glad you could make it. Um, I will have a, an additional webinar this evening at 8 o'clock where I will be discussing uh, risk. And that's tonight at 8 p.m. Hey, Larry. And, and everybody else here today. So what we got here today. So we got the spy. And let's just talk about the spy for a minute. All right. So um, in in the in the BYOB room, I announced um, probably not last week, but maybe the week before uh, that we I observed the two day chart. And here's the two day chart of uh, my morning spy pivot was for twenty two fifteen. I'll explain that in a few minutes. But my mornings. Uh, I observed the two day chart and I noticed that we had an igniting bar. It was an igniting candle. Now I looked at it on the daily chart and of course it's only one small candle, but I said to myself, what if we stack those two together? Cause that is one big igniting move. If we stack those two together, uh, there's a possibility that that is an igniting move. So I went to the two day chart and I observed a possible market makers pattern. So what I want to share with everybody is here we have the igniting bar. This, this will be, I'm going to take out my pen and I'll erase that and get my pen here. So this right here, let me get, try something different. So this right here, that's the igniting candle, all right, in the market makers, hey, Carly, in the igniting, the igniting candle for the market makers reversal pattern. Now, this candle right here, this is the pause candle. This is where we have a huge igniting move, and now there's a pause for everybody to – uh, evaluate what 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 just happened. Well, hold on here, like, and so this is this will be that's that's the pause candle. All right. Then right after the pause, you get the igniting candle, the pause candle. Now what you get is oh we're breaking out. Well you know let's let's test support to see if it can hold. So. Um, here, here we are, and now we're going to test support. Now, I thought it was probably going to hold up right on top of these tails right here. That's a big one. That's that's not what I wanted. Let me get my eraser, take that out, and we'll go back to this. And what I, what I wanted was a probably a pullback. Why is it doing that? A pullback to right on top of these tails. <clears throat> and that would be minor support right there. But we pulled all the way back to the major support area, which is down here. And that would be these tails on the bottom that you can see down there. So we pulled back to this area. That's our major support. I really thought minor support was going to hold up. But then after that, I said to myself, well, you know, if – if 413.95 holds up the following day, then the market maker's pattern is still intact because we did hit support. We just didn't hit. We went through minor support. But we came all the way down to major support, which is these tails that happened down here. So we hit the major support, bounced back up over 413.95, and that was my pivot on that day. And then I said, well, you know, so the market maker's pattern's back on. 
it's still in play. So now what we're looking for is three continuation channels, uh, candles to the upside. Now, each of these continuation channels will advance price and they'll make a higher high and a higher low than the previous candle. So you can notice here's the first of the continuation candles making a higher high and making a higher low than the previous candle here. So now here's the second. Now this is the first uh, three, four hours of the next candle in the two day market makers reversal pattern. So here we are, we've already made the higher high right up there. You see, here's our higher high. We beat this high right here and we beat this high right here. So now it's going to make, we would expect it to make a higher low. Now, uh, could it could it fail and take out this low? Yes, absolutely. I don't, I really don't see it happening. It would have to get through this midpoint right here. Now, this is the midpoint of, you know, here's our igniting move. And then here's the test of the support area that we just broke out of. And so coming all the way back down here, I really don't see it. So I really foresee that uh, this candle will probably be halted uh, from going down any further, probably by 3 p.m., 4 p.m. tomorrow, right here at the midpoint. And that will produce the second candle in the sequence of the market maker's reversal pattern. Now, notice it might not be green. Yes, I have a I have the recording button button on. Thank you for reminding me, Ed. I appreciate that. <clears throat> so it might not be green, and that's okay. In the market maker's reversal pattern, the only requirements that I have is that it make a higher high and a higher low, which I truly foresee that happening, you know, before 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Now, we got one more candle, and that'll be the Thursday-Friday candle. This, of course, is the Tuesday-Wednesday candle. We're just in the beginning of the Tuesday-Wednesday candle. And then we will have the Thursday-Friday candle. So we could actually kind of pull back for two days, maybe even three days. We could pull back, maybe even J-hook off of this midpoint area here. I don't know if we're going to be that weak, but uh, we are in a whippy market. It could pull back there. We'll see what happens. Uh, but that's what I'm looking for to happen. So sometime tomorrow, when we put the low of this candle in, hopefully it'll be tomorrow. Um, it may be today. It may just take off today and go higher. I don't know where the low is going to get set. It might get set today. It might get set tomorrow. And it might get set on Thursday. I think at least by Thursday afternoon, after 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, the low should be set and uh will have a higher low at some point in which Friday will be a, a volatile day. And hopefully they make, uh, by the end of Friday, a higher high than what we have here today. Now, could, could price turn around and go back up today? It absolutely could. We could have a green candle uh, by end of day. I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows, but we got, yes, yeah, Chicago PMI is tomorrow, Beige Book. Uh, I think we got a few other things, too. Let me uh, take this off for just a second and see what else I have. Yeah, we got Jolts. I'm not sure what Jolts are, but I do know about the Beige Book. And, of course, Susan Collins speaks. And that's it right there. But uh, Thursday and Friday, you know, ADP Thursday, jobless claims Thursday, 
productivity, PMI, that's on Thursday. Yeah, so uh, we'll see what happens this week. But th that is the market maker's reversal pattern. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm looking for a higher high, which I already got. It could. This might not be the higher high. It could go up even higher. Uh, but I won't know that until, like, I see the, tomorrow. So this is the beginning of the Tuesday, Wednesday candle. Then comes the Thursday, Friday, which we're expecting to kind of, uh, you know, start somewhere up here, make a high somewhere up there. Now, if I was to look for the measured move, I would... I would take this, and here's our breakout from right over this base here, and I would stack this breakout, probably like that, and stack it up right on top of that. And that would get us up to about 426, 427 area right there. And while they're up there, they also have at 430, they might even go up there and tag 430 because that's a big whole round number. Now we do have we do have a gap up there, which I will share with you so that you know where it is. We do have an unfilled gap. Right here, 425 all the way to 427.76. So if we happen to get up to 425 late in the afternoon Friday or, you know, early Friday, we could easily see the gap fill for another $2.50 uh, ripping right through 425.26 all the way to 4. 27.75. So just letting you know, after we have this pullback that we're experiencing today, uh, if the market gets J hooked around and turned around, we do have an unfilled gap up there, which I think they're going to go after. I think they're going to pursue it. Uh, the reason now, the reason I put my spy morning pivot at 422.15 because that was the gap. So if you look back at the daily candle, all right, and you didn't have this, you notice we traded right up underneath the gap on Friday, and then we gapped up over it in the morning, okay? So that left that left us with a double gap right there. So I noticed the pre-market trading up around 422.50, 422.80. I kind of figured they're not going to gap into the middle of it. They're probably going to gap over it. And they kind of did gap into the middle of it right there. But they traded up through it. And I said... Uh, to myself that, you know, if we come back through 422.15, which was the unfilled gap, that it would be a double unfilled gap, uh, it would be, there's a chance that we drop all the way back down to the T-line on the hourly chart, which is pretty much what we're doing right now. So whether we find support here remains to be seen, but that's why I picked 422.15, because if we come down, I don't really foresee it coming, coming back up. It's either they're strong enough to go in the morning or it's just going to melt down. So you can see right here on the 15-minute chart. I'll just go to the 10-minute chart right, right now. You can see we're kind of melting down. It's just a pullback, nothing to be scared about. Uh, I think the market makers pattern still going to play out. Uh, we could see, we could see, you know, Monday and Tuesday 
also could produce uh, a fourth advancement price advancement candle and we could get a fifth it's possibility uh just because friday wherever friday leaves off does not mean that there'll, there'll be a trend change at the end of friday uh you know opening up on monday there's no guarantee about that so we could get yet again a fourth and a fifth advancement candles which well, they could well take us up into 430 area if we're not already there uh, on uh, on Friday. So here's the SPY. I came up with that 422.15. That's going to be my pivot. You know, if we don't trade, if we don't gap and go, then there's a good chance we gap and fill. And we did. So that was why I put my pivot at 422.15. So I wanted to say something else, and I just forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, market makers pattern is still intact. Now you notice price is under VWAP. Okay, it'll probably stay under VWAP all day until the very end of day. You've got a 10-minute downtrend. Uh, I do have some puts on. Um just just temporarily you know i'm looking for the bottom to happen i kind of hedged some puts up here because i have a few calls that i have long that i have some good money in and i don't want to lose uh the profits that i had but i'm not ready to close them out yet and go chase them down when the market gap somewhere either you know wednesday or thursday so I will gradually uh, add more calls as those puts start making money so that I could reverse when, when the reversal comes, either late tomorrow or Thursday. We'll see when it's going to be. But here's, here's your VWAP, under VWAP. Got a 10-minute trend. Notice price is underneath the AEMA. I'm a big fan of the 10-minute cross. Okay, where the three EMA crosses right underneath the eight EMA. And you can see we've got a cross there. Now, I don't know whether they crossed here. I like to trade this, the cross right there, and then manage on the 15. Now, if you notice, you manage on the 15. You probably entered. You're still in it except for maybe right there. But. I'm still in this one. Let's see. The three was 420.64, and the eight was 420.65. So you, I'm still in it. You see how I, I enter on the 10 and manage on the 15, and it keeps me in that trade, and I'm still in it right there. So... That's that's one of my favorite patterns is the 10 minute chart where the three crosses either over or under the eight EMA. Uh, what I am expecting uh, over the next, you know, today, tomorrow and, and Thursday is some consolidation here. You can see we started some consolidation on Friday probably after about after the noon noon hour you can see prices it's moving up but it's generally just moving to the right so we're just looking at good got three and a half days of consolidation and then maybe another rip to the upside hopefully up to this 425 area maybe even through it all the way up to 427 76. Uh, if you notice the market, what is moving the market right now? Uh, for the most part, you know, uh, if you look at T2122, you know, uh, we're in the sell zone. We're not in the sell zone. We're in the chop zone, but we're in the, the sell side of the chop zone. So, you know, market's not doing so well. If you look at it in the big picture, if you look at T2123, which like measures all the stocks in the New York Stock Exchange, well, 
we are making more new lows over you know over making new highs so we're getting a lot more new four week lows than we are getting new four week highs so we got a red trend indicator and you can see the price action is underneath the trend indicator which makes it red so it looks like all the small caps and mid caps are kind of selling off the only thing that's really kind of powering the market at this time from what i can tell is uh this components and uh components of the fngu if you notice here's fngu and i'll look at it on an hourly chart here you can see fngu gapping up making making new highs today so you look at the components in the fngu you'll see a lot of them are gapping up very bullish today and that's pretty much what's been carrying the market through this uh, rally and i call it the ai rally uh, because it seems to be uh, inspired by the conversations that are taking place around ai and uh, some of the chip stocks that go along with ai of course nvidia being one of the top ones which really had a monster day i think on friday or thursday <laughs> So I'll go back to the room here, see what everybody's writing. And I'll take questions one at a time here. I see SPY for, hold there for sure. Yeah, I think uh, SPY should uh, may, may ask a question. I see SPY daily 10 SMA for 413, so must hold there for sure. I, I don't think it gets below uh 416 really because you got the midpoint there it may spike it uh but if it decides to trade a candle down there yeah i think 413 definitely holds us up i i i really don't foresee it going that low things are still bullish uh the fngu is still bullish at this time but the problem is is the the, the rest of the new york stock exchange is not it's a possibility that they could they could find a bounce at some point from selling off uh, either Wednesday or Thursday, and that would help inspire the FNGU to run up and make new highs again. So the fifty percent line uh, for support would be just over four fifteen. Yes. May I got it at right right around four sixteen thirty two. CP in Texas, correct. It should be a daily pivot over four sixty. Yeah, four sixteen is a midpoint. Yeah. And we're just talking about the beige book and retail sales. Yes. And may ask, does XRT look bearish to me? Yes. I'll take a look at those. Uh, in just a moment well let's just look at some of the other indices around the market before we start taking up uh individual stocks and sectors right now so let's go take a look at qqq and you can see qqq having a really good day bouncing up you know gapping up coming back not even filled the gap yet uh just kind of resting up there very bullish on the QQQ. Yeah, I like I like the QQQs looking really good up there. Um, again, FNGU helps power the QQQ. If you look at that on the daily chart, you can see that's all the those big cap stocks like Meta and other such stocks i've got a uh, a breakdown of that fngu i'll share with y'all in the room it's somewhere up here i got it there's the fngu if you want to see the components in there 
And let's take a look at the IWM because that's that's a lot of the small and mid cap stocks. So here's our IWM. It went up. <clears throat> and you can see this is an hourly chart. And you did a bear 180 here. Uh, but you did manage to sink out, uh, you know, pretty much a, a higher low here. So that, that's a good sign when the IWM manages to make a higher low. It's not significant higher low, but it is a higher low. So therefore, the pressure is going to be on the bulls to produce that higher high up here. So we got a high right here. So the pressure is going to be on the bulls to produce a higher high somewhere up over here. So we could we could see some buying coming in soon maybe tomorrow or thursday we'll see what happens we also have a small gap here that could get filled right through there and you want to check that out on your hourly chart the iwm now, maybe that got filled i can see a tail candle going up there not sure about that yeah, that looks like that looks like that got filled there. So uh, again, we're looking for uh, we got a higher low, possible another higher low. Again, we're looking for price to move, you know, in, in the in the upward direction here, and challenge this high. Uh, the pressure is going to be on the bulls to produce that that higher high right across here. And let's go take a look at the diamonds to see if they got any signs of turning around here. So we'll go to the diamonds. And diamonds kind of rolling over. Uh, still got a got a lower, got a lower low than what we had before. Uh, no higher high yet. So diamonds still a ways off from possibly uh, breaking out. They'd have to break this trend line right down through there. So Diamond still got quite a bit of work to do before we could see any bullish, uh, a, a, a bullish pattern developed. Uh, they could easily have a pullback to the trend line, but really need to see them break through and then test support and then rip to the upside. Now they could see that. You know, if you think about it, we've got uh, the debt ceiling seems to have be uh, yesterday's news. Uh, I noticed uh, from reading Ed's blog that, um, you know, the defense budget didn't get any more, but they didn't get any less. So uh, th that's that's good news for the defense budget. So. Some of those stocks in the diamonds, those industrials like Boeing and Lockheed Martin, you know, we could see those bounce in a few days, you know, as things get ironed out. And I'm sure uh, they're going to need, you know, they're going to do some spending in the defense sector. So uh, we could see uh, the diamonds kind of get fired up here within a few days. We'll see. And May wants to know, where's the decent support on the diamonds? Well, let's just go look at it on the daily chart. You're at the midpoint right here. Uh, you've got this, this area comes right through here. See these tails? You see this bottom here? And then you've got this spike there. So that, to me, represents the decent support right there and you can see we came down there and spiked it a few days ago may right there see that and of course the reaction you got off of hitting that support was like you know it's like that red rubber school ball hitting the brick wall you know nice bounce all the way back to the t line so and then of course it goes back into this would be, um, you know, minor, minor resistance right there. So you can see it 
it hit minor resistance and of course now it's coming back to test the midpoint minor resistance would be these tails that you see here and of course that's not a tail but that's a it would have been a tail if you slid the two together you'd have another tail there so you've got you've got some some minor minor resistance right up there that price is running into so it may waffle back and forth for a day or two before possibly getting a breakout it's got a little bit of work to do here on the diamonds and we've been getting a little bit of sell-off in the kre so let's go look at the kre because it's been kind of a little bit of melting today let's take a look where the trend line is so i'm going to take this out and move my trend line back to here i'm on the daily chart you can see we we can you kind of connect the tops of these right through there we've got kind of this sloth downtrend happening right here in the kre and just still trapped underneath it uh the nice thing is the daily the three is up over the eight but you haven't broken trend yet right there you're still underneath this sloth downtrend now kre if you notice on the 10 minute chart we had some selling we had a whole lot of wild waffle action there then we sold off till about noon and then the selling stopped so that's a good sign we're going to need the financials to have a really nice robust rally we'll see what happens here uh xrt someone wanted to look at xrt that's the retail etf for the spiders uh, on the daily uh it's it's in a downtrend still so uh I don't see anything that makes me want to buy that until it breaks trend. Uh, we've got a double bottom here. And we've got a whole lot of consolidation lining up here. It looks eventually like, you know, things could break through here. You've got one, two, three, four, five candles wanting to break through that, that area right here. Now you can see we went up. This was resistance. This was resistance days ago. That's on the 10 minute. Let's go to the hourly. Let's look at things on the hourly. See on the hourly, we got an H pattern setting up here. And if we look at it on the Hike and Ashi, on the hourly, you can see we're up. And then we're kind of rolling over here. So so somebody asked about XRT. Let me see what the question was, and I will answer it completely. Does the XRT look bearish to me? Yes, it does. It's still in a downtrend, uh, and it's still producing a H pattern right there on the hourly so yes it does look like it's bearish to me and may wants to know target any more room to the downside uh you know there's always may it's a tough question you know it's there's always room to the downside they could split their stock tomorrow you know or they can announce a buyback, so but we can go take a look at it. Yeah, that, that's selling a lot of selling there, and you can see how many times we've been down to this area one, two, three, four, five, back down here, six. You know, you're breaking through breaking through resistance you're just now getting started with this breakthrough of resistance right there 
um, you don't you don't have any support till you get to this area right here. You've got not till one twenty five forty four. Um, yeah, you got some support there. I think it's going to hold up there for maybe a day, but uh, I still see, you know, possibly more selling, you know, I don't see any signs of things turning around yet. You know, there's not even a tail. And uh, so, yeah, there's this, it still looks like there's still more room to the downside. Let's look at it on a 10 minute chart. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any signs of capitulation yet. So, you know, as long as that, as long as this hourly downtrend is still got space between, you know, price, the three and the eight, uh, it's still moving down. You don't understand the one candle stop rule on the 10 minute chart. Um, that's a great question, Centuri. So, which chart are you looking at? Any chart. Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really like. You take a 10 minute chart. Let's just take the spy for instance. Okay. And let's just look, let's just look at the 10 minute chart on the spy. Let's just blow it up a little bit so we can see it. All right, here's the three crossing the eight, right? Is that right? You got you got to work with me here. I'm going to need just some binary. Yeah, thank you. All right, so three crosses the eight. You can see the three crosses here. So here's here's one candle right there. My stop would go right over at the top of that. Right there. That's that's one candle stop. You get a 10 minute downtrend. And like I said, I like to manage that on the 15. If you can see the 15 never breaks. You got a 10 minute downtrend, three crosses under. And you're still in it. Okay. Any questions about that one? On an unturned chart, um, what do you, what do you, which one you want me to pick up? Like, you want to do Intel? All right, here, here's Intel. All right. Price comes in. It's in a 10-minute uptrend. All right, let's say the trend is already intact and you're not in Intel, but you like Intel because it's gapping up higher and it looks like it wants to challenge this downtrend line. Uh, you know, you're going to wait for it to pull back to VWAP area and you put your candle, you buy this candle or this candle and put your stop underneath right there and you stay in it as long as that, you know, that 15 minute trend stays intact. Does that, does that help? Any questions on that one? Underneath the tails? Yeah, I would put my stop underneath the tails. Absolutely. At least by at least by five cents or or you know four cents. Okay, on that one, just pick a pick a chart so I can. Well, give me something. Give me something you wanted to buy today, but we're scared. And it happens to everybody. Don't don't worry about it. Just you know, but you you just you couldn't pull the trigger because you didn't see what you wanted to see. Yeah, if you don't have anything, it's okay. I'll go to another. XLC, oh, okay, on Friday. All right. You want to look at XLC on Friday. 
All right. So this is this is Friday. This is the 26th because this is today. And you you got a 10 minute. See the three? Well, let me go to the 10. And this would be the 26th. This is Friday. So you, you could buy this and put your stop right underneath that candle right there. And you'd still be in. Or 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 let's say you want to buy this. You see the three cross, your stop goes right underneath that candle right there. Here it crosses one more time. And your stop goes right underneath this. So this, this candle crosses, the three crosses over the eight, and your stop goes right underneath there. There's a one candle stop that works out great. And you're out up here. So you're in, you're in here. All right. Let's say you're in there and you're out here. So you took it, you could road that one from 6196 to 6243. That would have given you 50 cents. This one would have given you. Uh, let's say you let's say let's say let's be realistic. Let's say you got in here, okay, and it's still in, and you don't get out till 6196. So that one you would have got 80 cents right there. But if if you're willing to manage on the 15, let's see how many of them you'd still be in. Well, if you got this one at 6118 right here. And you decided to manage on the 15, you'd be in that one for a buck and a buck buck 20 right there. Because you wouldn't even have gotten out on this candle here because you still got space there. It's up to you. You can just close it out as soon as the three cross is over. It's your call. You can do that. Or you can just move it up like every hour. I would move my stop up to the bottom of the hourly candle. You know, the previous candles low. You know, after after this moves up here, you could move your stop up to the bottom of that hourly candle. That's That's one way. All right. And then it goes up again. Let's say this candle goes up well you don't want to lose that so you move it up to the bottom of that candle or the or the or the body of it all right then it starts to like waffle around which you're pretty much expecting you know those afternoon hours to kind of slow down all right so you just kind of wait and let that pass through because I mean remember you want to stay in it as long as it that trend stays intact and you could go up to the next hourly candle. Once you see that red candle and price comes back up. All right. Then when you see this candle take out that one, you can move it up to there. And then when you see this take off up there, whenever you get a gap like that, uh, you know, a lot of traders like to take their profits right into the gap. That would be your, I mean, it's a gift. I mean, you're still in this and you wake up in the morning and you're up, you know, 2%. Just take your money right there. All right. Use those hourly candles. Okay. So, Paul, yeah, Intel. Yes, I am in Intel. I like Intel. Thank you, Paul, for, yeah. Uh, Bringing that back. Yeah, Intel. Yep, I like Intel. I think Intel breaks through this downtrend. Again, I, I, the key words are, I think, okay? I don't, I don't know. But uh, it's, it's looking, I saw this on the daily. You got a bull 180 right here. Now, bull 180 is just one candle unless it gets follow through. So it looks like we're getting some follow through today. And I played the 10 minute chart and I, I sold a call up here and tried to reload it down here 
and I couldn't get filled, but I did get some shares uh, in my other account. And of course, you can see that 10 minute trend just stays intact. And if you manage on the 15, you're still in it right now. And you can see it grinding up against that. It's leaning on that downtrend right now. You can see this. This is an attempt to stab through it. This is an attempt, and it got blocked. And here we are again. Now we're just like we're leaning on the resistance above right here. And that's the resistance from this downtrend line right there. So I, I love Intel. I like that that rally back. And Chris, you want to look at TBT. TBT, ultra short the treasury. Okay. That looks like uh I just bought TLT. And your ultra short. Oh, the ultra short's going down. Okay. That would make that would that would be why my TLT is going up. Yes, of course. TBT is coming down. So you've got an H pattern. And I would expect that to continue. See how much it rose up there. I would expect it to come down that much down here. So I like TBT short. And I, I am long the TLT. Of course, instead of the H pattern, I, I got the J hook happening right through here. This uptrend right there. My feelings are treasuries, uh, they're not going to raise taxes. So they're going to have to raise funds some way. And I, I feel like they're going to have to make the treasury bonds uh, juicy so that we are willing to abandon our uh, stock market strategies and buy some treasury bonds. Of course, a lot of the banks will be buying and snapping those up to recover from the inflationary pressure that they're going through right now. So I, I like the treasury bond long and you like it. Um, you've got the ultra short, so I see. Sorry, John, what is the bull 180? Oh, yeah, sure, Intel. Um, I call it a bull 180 when it something turns around and goes the other direct way. See this? See this big candle down right here, T? And then we turn around and price just turns around and rips back in the other direction and just erases all of the price deterioration right there. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. My that when it price gets erased, I call that a bull 180 because the bulls erased what the bears did right there. So that's a bull 180 candle. It completely engulfs. That's, you could call it a bullish engulfing. See how it engulfs all of that candle? Any of the part of the previous day's candle there and the gap. I call that a bull 180. Does that make sense? Yeah. And again, it's just one candle unless you get follow through. And of course, I was looking for the follow through today and I got it. So, yeah. You're welcome. And my wants to know what about TSLL? That's bullish. Uh, daily chart. I mean, it might be a red candle, my, but you know, anytime you got candles making higher lows and higher highs, you know that that's bullish, right here. See that higher low. High low, still yet again, another high low. You know, this thing could pull back to, you know, 1111 and still be in, in my bullish camp because it's still higher than this low. So uh, it's quite extended. I mean, you gapped up. Hope you took some profit if you owned it Friday and you were willing to hold over the weekend. But. You know, this is one of those stocks that I think is in the uh, FNGU. 
if, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, let me just pull that up and make sure. Here it is. I'm just going to blow this up and slide this over. All right, so we got, yeah, so, so you can see Tesla. So the FNGU is weighted this almost 12% in FNGU. And I'm sure it's one of the heavyweights in QQQ. I'm sure it's in ARC. And I'm sure it's in SPY. And I bet it's a heavyweight in all of those. So being, being a heavyweight, it's a big demand for it. Of course, this is one of those market movers. So it's just give it some time to rest. Uh, and then look for this to continue that trend until that trend breaks. So... This is long. It's just kind of extended up here, uh, just kind of hanging out. Uh, probably going to have to rest for a little bit before taking off again. Uh, it's still long. There's no downtrend. It's just your your time to take profit was this morning in the first hour. Does that make sense? my yeah it's still long it's just extended it's gonna have to take a a break can you hear me my i guess i guess he yeah i'm i'm still long this trend is not broken it's it's looking good And it looks like it's trying to break trend right here. So this could probably pull back and find support right on top of there. Okay, for TSLL. You know, look for this to find support right through here. And then and then bounce up to the upside. Right there, look for that J hook to materialize right there. Can you can you guys hear me? I don't see anything. Yeah, okay, all right. All right, now they all came through. All right. All right. And All right. So, you want to have any uh, other stocks? Any questions on the market makers reversal? You're welcome, Monty. Uh, any any questions on the market makers reversal pattern? Is there? Oh, Bob wants to look at Snap. Let's take a look at Snap, Bob. Snap again. Uh, you got consolidation. I'm on a daily chart. Uh, higher. Higher high, higher low. Um, let's look at this pullback here to see where you are in relation to this rally. You're right up into the midpoint. And you can see the resistance. See these tails right here. So you notice you're, you're kind of consolidated here. It may take a, a week or, you know, three or four days. It is a tech stock. So uh, as long as this trend stays intact, uh, it's still bullish. I like it. As long as the trend stays intact. Let's go look at it on the hourly. Okay, now your hourly is about to roll over here. But we're, look where it's rolling over at the midpoint. That's why this tool, this tool is such a valuable tool right here because you can see you got one, two hourly tails and three is now rolling over at the midpoint. That's right where it's supposed to roll over, right there. So look for it to come back to support right here and hold right on this, right on this line right, right here. 
right on the tops of those, right through there. And you're looking for, you know, for price to kind of uh, J hook right over the top of that, kind of right through here and then out that way. Give it time to work through the uh, the inventory too, because remember you're going to have a lot of resistance up there, all right? Because let's just back out for just a minute. Okay, you got you got all this price action here, so it's it's going to take a little bit of time, you know, to work through that price action there. Now let's go look at the trend. And we have a trend that kind of snaps through here. You know, you got, I mean, you could be getting a double whammy. I don't know where this thing lies, but you can see, you can see right here, we have a, a downtrend. If I was to connect some of these tails up here, Bob, and I mean, and it very well may be right there. You notice if I connect that one, this one kind of gets connected to it too, right? So you're getting, you know, double walloped here by the midpoint and by the downtrend line. But once, for me, once that finds a way to get over that downtrend and over that midpoint and find some support, up around here, around 1028, then it's it's game on as long as I got an hourly uptrend over, over that area. This was a beautiful inverse head and shoulders right here. I don't know if you captured that, but that was that was nice right there. You got a double bottom there, and then you got to bounce out of there. Okay. So this one, give it time for me. One of the biggest, one of the biggest, uh, you know, qualities you can have as a as a trader. You're welcome. One of the biggest qualities you can have is patience. Be patient enough to let this thing show you where it wants to go. But you also got to know, like, when, when you're ready to pull the trigger, when your setup is ready. Get ready to pull the trigger, right? Yeah, trading's a lot like hunting. Is a is is a lot. You could be up in the deer stand uh, for hours in the cold or in the duck blind. You know, it's a, yeah, it's a lot more time looking than there is shooting. That's 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 very true, CP. Very true. Any any other questions? When I post bulls and bears each morning, what criteria and the scans? Right here, Frank. I I use this right here. I use the LTA scanner. All right. I got a I got a 10 minute bear daily and a 10 minute bull daily. And I come right here and I click that. And I'll get into the criteria. Just a second, okay? And you can see a lot of my stuff comes right off of here. Let's see, Voya, TXT. Uh, what's another one? Uh, Dow was on there. I think CF might have been on there. So you can see right, right through here. It's where I get a lot of this criteria right there. So that was that was the bears. All right, and then this would be the bulls right there. Let's see if any of those are on there that I posted in the morning. Uh, no, I don't, I don't see anything, really. None of those were there. But, okay, so now for the criteria right here. All right. I like a rise, a rising average, and I scan this on the daily chart. And what I'm looking for is the 17 exponential moving average, you know, to be increasing 
to go be moving up at least 10 days. Okay. See that the 17 EMA can be moving up at least 10 days. That's it. And for average volume, I I don't trade anything less than a million very often. Most of my stuff I trade more than they got to trade over a million shares on average. So at the 50 day moving average for the volume is less than a million, I typically do not trade it. Uh, usually define price range anywhere from 20 to 500. In my sweet spots, usually about 30 to 100. Right there. Okay. And be the same thing on the downside. So that's what I'm looking for. And, you know, when I pull this up, I've also got one other cross. It's the 10. So when I get this, it's the three EMA crossing. Well, this is the bull, so it crossed up over the eight EMA. So if you look at it, recently there was, you know, 17 stocks had the, had filled this criteria. Actually, more than that. Uh, passing all scans, yeah, 17, where the three crossed over the eight, and uh, also the daily candle was moving up 10 days in a row. Okay, Frank, did you did you understand that? Perfect. Uh, can I show reversal patterns? Yeah, sure. Um, which you are you looking for the market makers reversal pattern? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let me just uh, let me just turn off the recorder, and I'm gonna I'll post them both of them in here for you, Nate. All right, and. Uh, you can capture them, but I, it's going to take me a minute to get them. So I'm just going to turn off the recorder right now. And.